Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of Iblis Manifestations podcast. On this week's episode, it's my absolute honor and privilege to have my friend Giuseppe, aka Void AD, from the notorious and the mysterious black metal band from Italy called Fetus Inversa. Of course, I've been looking forward to this one for quite a while because simply of just my fascination with the band. But as it seemed, uh, Giuseppe and I were on much more of a level point of view than I even anticipated prior to this conversation. And I have to say that I am very pleased in how this one turned out. Um, and coincidentally, very little of this podcast actually ended up being about music. And we delved all the way into, I suppose you could say, the secrets of the universe and the matrix and so on. And we also covered some more mundane aspects of life as well. And uh, yeah, so coming shortly will be that. And I hope that you guys will uh, enjoy the conversation. Uh, Fetus and Versa will also be going on tour very shortly. And they will be a part of a tour package headlined by none other than Aklis. Uh, my guest for the episode 9 of the podcast, which is still arguably the most uh, viewed and most listened to episode on Iblis Manifestations yet. And uh, also on this uh, tour package is going to be Chaos Invocation. The tour will be called Diabolical Liminal Congress and will be starting on, I believe, the 14th of September. And then it will go on for just about a couple of weeks after that. So if you are in Europe... I could not recommend this tour package anymore. I know that just last week uh, I recommended another tour and I will have you know that on the episode after this one there's another tour which is happening in Europe which I'll be plugging and the reason for this is that whilst at the time being it might seem like we have a lot of shows happening, there's a lot of festivals, there's a lot of different tours you never know if these things will be happening again, right? You never know if a certain band is even going to continue after a tour. And you certainly, now after having seen how things unfolded the last couple of years, don't know if there's going to be some kind of fucking world event that's going to stop us from enjoying these shows. So if you can, please make the travel and make the time just to see these shows. Uh, I'm sure that you will appreciate it afterwards so yeah be sure to check out Fetus Inversa on their upcoming tour and anything else happening around you that's worth watching I guess so yeah as always thank you all very much for tuning into Iblis Manifestations I hope that I'm offering you guys something of value here and I appreciate you giving your time to uh, myself and all of the guests which I have featured on the podcast I'm, I'm very happy with how things are going here so hope that you guys will enjoy this one as well and as always all of the feedback subscriptions and all of the good stuff as always are very much appreciated and welcome so now ladies and gentlemen without further ado allow me to welcome void ad from fetus inversa to iblis manifestations Right, Mr. Void AD, or can I call you Giuseppe? Giuseppe, he's okay. Yeah? He's yeah. Cool, man. Well, uh, first of all, welcome to the podcast. Um, it's a real pleasure to have you on. Uh, I know that... Pleasure. Thank you. And I know that you don't do this sort of thing very often, uh, if ever. So I do actually really appreciate you uh, jumping on, and I'm excited as to what... First time. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm excited as to what we can actually cover here together. Uh, I mean, first of all, how are you feeling? How you how you've been doing? Pretty good, actually. Uh, I'm a bit. Yeah, it's a bit chaotic right now because I'm a bit busy with the preparation for the tour, 
we are starting on yeah next week and i'm leaving to berlin next monday so in a week and we will have a couple of days of rehearsals and yeah we will start the debauchery in two days before the other the other bands and then on wednesday we're playing the first gig in poland i think and then we have these six countries yeah I mean, that's great, man. I mean, I had uh, Kyle from Atlas on the show on episode nine, uh, famously, I should say. And uh, it's a killer package. We did talk about the tour back then, but obviously the time is now, basically. I think you start in about, uh, I don't know if it's like 10 days or something like that. And uh, it's, uh, I think it should be a great, great tour. I highly recommend everyone to come and check it out if they haven't. And obviously I'm sure... From the things that we're going to discuss on here, it'll give even more reason for people to want to come and check out the tour, but it's a really killer package. And if I'm correct, this is your first one in a very long time as well, correct? Yeah, last tour actually was with Orna in 2014 or 15. I'm not sure. And, well, obviously the last three years we didn't, we didn't have a single show. And but yeah, in the um, before even before COVID, actually we had a very um, uh, we have very few shows, something like one or two per year. And the last shows that I remember actually were in Lithuania. Um, I don't remember the name of the festival. I'm sorry. And uh, in 2000, 2018. I think we played both Glasgow and Stockholm Slaughter in a row. And that was a great weekend, actually, I remember. We had that secret show with Marduk and Take back then in um, in Stockholm because of some Antifa bullshit going on. I do recall this. Yeah, I do remember this actually happening at the time. And uh, I mean, that all things aside actually looked to have been a tremendous success for a show and it looked like a killer fucking vibe you know like no prisoners taken that's kind of the impression that i had from it was it like 2017 or something if i remember correctly 29 no 2018 2018 sure yeah yeah that's great man well it's um I mean, it's great that you have this tour coming up, and uh, obviously this is going to be different from all of the previous ones as well, because you pretty much have a new live lineup as well, correct? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Actually, it's very new. I mean, we, uh, I, found, I found myself in the last six months, basically, to change the whole lineup because some... Uh, some of the old members decided to step back for personal reasons, basically, and for yeah other priorities that I completely understand. So um, me and Bjorn, the vocalist, had to find somebody pretty quickly to, uh, to keep the tour going. So luckily we found... Uh, I mean, we met we met a lot of people. We met we knew a lot of people already, and uh, some people we knew were already interested in case something would have happened in the future, and that something happened. So we one month ago in July, um, if I'm not wrong, we had yeah two months ago we had the first rehearsals with the new members who are vocalist and um, Julian, vocalist and uh, guitarist of Vortex of End and Amaori, um, drummer of uh, Vortex of End. And we will have on tour also Sebastiano, who is a bass player in uh, Ritual Death and vocalist and guitarist in Funeral Funeral Burst. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's that's a killer fucking lineup. There's there's a lot of like that's a that's a good sort of chain of names of bands, you know. I mean Vortex of End, the fucking killer. Uh Funeral Harvest are very good too. They got a they got a new album coming out very soon. And uh that sounds good, man. I'm I'm very excited to see how that's gonna go for you guys. But obviously, you know how I said earlier that you don't do this kind of thing very often. Uh, I'm just wondering uh, if we could maybe go back in time and actually sort of go through the history of the band because obviously 
originally uh, I believe that the band was just between yourself and uh, Omega or uh, Giannata. And uh, this was in, I think, early, mid-2000s, if I'm correct? I think um, I started writing stuff for Fides Inversa and created the, the, uh, the, the concept of the first album, I believe, in 2006. So, mm -hmm. um, but the whole thing materialized, started materializing with it between 2007, 2008, and... Uh, we managed to record. Um, I met Jonathan a long time ago. I know him. I mean, he's a sort of milestone in the Italian black metal scene, mm -hmm. and uh, so I knew him already since years. And um, after trying, after trying to record with some other drummers, um, it felt natural to go to 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 go to the source because actually everybody. When I mean it, it, it was back then. It was, it was probably even more, uh, yeah, even funnier than now because because back then Jonathan was a sort of was a sort of source from uh, which all the black metal bands in Italy wanted to drink from, because he was he was one of the very few drummers in Italy who could handle drums and still have the right attitude for uh, for that kind of black metal so even if, if he was very busy i thought yeah why not let's do it and he was super uh enrolled since the beginning so he, he loved the idea and uh, it came out that the at some point while we were recording the, um, uh, the album we had the, necess the necessity to find a vocalist because actually we didn't have one i had everything prepared the uh, lyrics were amazing in my mind and uh, but didn't have a vocalist so he tried out in studio some uh, some demos for the vocals it sounded fantastic basically back then he wasn't singing at all he was playing drums mostly and uh, so that's how um, that's how that first album came out, and uh, I think it was pretty solid. I mean, uh, we had instantly this contract with Osmos Productions, and taken the story of Osmos Productions, we wouldn't have never said no. So it was quite an honor to start with, uh, especially for an Italian black metal band, because it. it Italian black metal has always been a sort of joke. I say myself still right now that most of the Italians black metal are quite a joke. But yeah, I mean, I, I never believed in in the idea of a scene or anything like that. I never felt myself part of anything like that. I discovered more a sense of community through the years after meeting the real solid people of the scene. Uh, around festivals and concerts uh, around Europe, so that's how that's how I entered in contact with the the scene. Because until then, in two thousand and nine, Fides Inversa had no ambitions to to play live, even. So um, uh, we started as a studio band to to be anonymous, completely anonymous which became almost impossible at some point because after the first gigs, everybody knew who we, we, we were, basically. So, um, yeah. And then after after that first album, we we started play, playing live quite quite often and uh, we started receiving lots of, uh, uh, lots of requests around, around Europe. And we and we also played with solid bands like Onscapped during their first, if I'm not wrong, tour. So we had a, we had this mini tour with Onscapped and um, and Valkyria. And since then we since then we sort of created this bond with certain personalities, like yeah, some members of those bands, and and then played a few times in uh, in Sweden. And we discovered basically that we had such a solid fan base in, in, in countries like Sweden, uh, while, while in Italy probably nobody knew us. So, um, yeah, 
and this brings us to a few years later to uh, the moment we basically decided to move from Osmos to Water Committee, simply because it felt more natural to to um, it felt no more more natural to be on a label that would have would have been uh, more into our own courts, more in, into our own line of thinking as well. Osmos 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 is definitely a um, a great label, but um, especially back then, in um in a, an historical period in which basically people uh, started downloading music much more, and the promotion was definitely all on online was happening all online, and yeah, Osmos was still into that old style way way of promoting records that didn't work much. So that okay, sure. probably that probably kept that a bit out of the um, out of the real underground we wanted to be we wanted to be in. But yeah, I think that we we regained that in the moment we we released the first the, the second record with War Terror Committee, which also brought us to enter in a circle of personalities that were definitely much more into yeah into our own line of thought and and here we are today uh last in 2020 we recorded the second album and it came out uh it came out exactly during the pandemic during the uh, actually it, i remember that i was locked at home in milano back then while we were in the stage of mixing when we were mixing, basically the world closed, and I was in the very epicenter of the of the pandemic. It was quite extraneating, but yeah, it was strange as fuck. But we had to go on, and uh, in some way, in some way, also that 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 feeling, that strange sensation of being completely secluded and uh, and locked probably even inside because 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 being being locked inside at home actually uh, probably brought me into into a sort of uh, into a sort of state of uh, closure inner closure i don't know if i if if you if you can understand and and uh, in what way did this bring you closure so you mean that b basically when the world uh, came to the lockdown and we obviously didn't have the mediums that we normally had is this are you saying that you had some kind of a closure was this due to the fact that uh i don't know i guess perhaps the facing the inevitable sort of a situation facing the inevitable yeah definitely um no, well, I think in some way, I think in some way, it closed down some certain, some certain uh, perception of the of, of reality of the uh, of yeah of what reality is, and uh, let let me try to find a, to find another way to explain it. I mean. Yeah, no. Um, I think I think that the way I uh, the way I I personally uh, I personally lived that lockdown actually, um, yeah, definitely brought me to face um, to to face certain demons that were sleeping since too long, and being literally locked down in an apartment in the in the city where all this was was starting brought me to brought me to literally. Uh, face, yeah, face these demons and uh, and fighting them, fighting them personally. Yeah, it was a hard time. I think was it the same for you? It was exactly the same for me. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I've even talked about this before on the podcast, you know, and uh, that seemed to be. A common thread, uh, especially I think for those of us musicians, particularly within black metal, particularly within 
these more particular strains of black metal, you know, where you, um, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain, but there's a lot of metaphysical elements involved. And there's, uh, I think that we're also very observant towards life. And we perhaps many of us view life as a journey as such. And I think that um, whatever we had sort of swept under the rug for the longest time, when this happened, it was like, then you had to face that and then you had to bring it out. It was exactly the same for me personally, because um, at the time, actually, uh, I was going through some personal stuff, but then... Uh, actually did a small tour with Trivex and I had the best time ever but then on that tour I managed to catch COVID and then when I came back it was straight into lockdown so after that tour I didn't see anyone for eight weeks and in that eight weeks I had to uh, you know I had to look in the mirror a lot longer than I think I would have normally had the chance to do so so I, I do I do relate to that of course but I also feel like uh, there's uh, as hard as that will have been for many of us. I also feel like it was a, it was a bit of a necessary evil too. You know what I mean? No, absolutely. Um, if I look back, obviously, uh, obviously, the the lessons that that all this process brought to me actually are in, are invaluable. So yeah, uh, I definitely, I definitely believe that it was necessary um yeah and this confrontation between the secularity and the spirituality of the of the of the whole thing of having to face yourself having to face your doubts also about reality about about politics as well about yeah everything and uh yeah i mean that that was a that was huge i think no i think uh this is one of the signs of this is one of the signs that the that that Kali Yuga brings to great have the potential to bring you to great inner growth, no? Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent, man. I I mean, uh, I always look at it like this: that I mean, you can take this particular part however way we want, but like in two thousand twelve, everyone said it was the end of the world. And uh, obviously, since that time, we did actually enter the age of Aquarius. And I also feel like ever since then, maybe not so much straight away, but you can see how there are certain illusions and the things that we had built up within this world, and uh, many of the secrets and many of the the old designs seem to be falling apart. And it's almost like the world is shedding, shedding skin to become something different. And... I feel that we have the, we actually have the control to, we have the power to control that uh, situation uh, in a sense. And uh, yeah, I completely agree with you. I mean, I can put it very basically like this. I mean, I, I know we were talking about music a minute ago, but we're here now, so let's go there. But, <laughs> you know, it was inevitable. But I think that, you know, for me, and as well as a lot of people, uh, I'm, I'm not sure maybe yourself involved in this as well, but there was always a little bit of a distrust towards the establishment, and there was always a sense of, uh, I mean, we always said, fuck the world, this and that, you know, that was a, that was a big part of our ethos from the get-go anyway, but then this sort of bring, brought a whole other layer to that, that um, it shone light on certain aspects of just our whole system and, and existence within uh, humanity that it was like, oh, okay, yeah, they are lying to us. This is a f completely fucked up situation. And that, um, that sort of, that lack of trust where, where you then, the only conclusion you can make from it is that you now have to take things into your own hands. Uh, as hard as I think that is, is probably the most valuable thing to have actually come out of this uh, experience. Uh, and I'm wondering how that sort of reflects off of uh, your own experiences of this as well. Well, actually, I am, I am always on the edge of your kind of optimism and some sort of, not nihilism, but pessimistic opinion over, over what 
what came out of this situation because actually as far as i'm perceiving the, the reality of things nowadays i mean i do hope that many people woke up in some way but from what i've seen from what i've seen around around me actually i don't see many people many people being awake from from what they just they they're just living i mean i don't know uh what freaks me out sometimes when i think about it is that really in, um uh, even in the black metal scene i mean uh, the 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 kind of the kind of rebellion to towards the the establishment actually uh feels more like uh feels more like a, a a play like a game not and it's not and it's not real so in this last in these last two years i found myself i found myself having arguments with people of any sorts but i would have never expected to have arguments about what was what was happening uh with people from the scene with friends uh from the scene who actually uh didn't feel like didn't feel like like discussing or putting or having doubts over what was up or what was happening so um, i feel myself i feel i feel like there's a huge uh there's a huge um problem with the values of of what we are dealing with i mean the forces we are dealing with if we want to call them with a with a metaphysical term in, instead of just playing out with with the word re rebellion do we do we really believe into them or is it just a or or, or is it just mimicking a mock i, I don't know is it just a, a game or we are we are doing it for real because i think that there's much more beyond the 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 the, the verb to rebel than than just yeah putting a mask on and playing on a playing on a playing some black metal and having some face paint on i think there's definitely much more and uh, do we really believe into these values or do we think that it's just bullshit in the end and at the end of the day, you are just, yeah, an employee. And during the weekend, uh, you, you like to play black metal. So, yeah. So that brought me to lots of, lots of arguments with people during this period. And I think you, I think you can see the same. No, you can see the same. Yeah, I... Of course, but I wouldn't even say that arguments are really the way because I, first of all, I tend to be not someone who wants to argue with people uh, because to me what other people think or what other people see is oftentimes that's mostly a reflection of themselves anyway. And, uh, you know, I think there are ways of putting things across that doesn't have to be in a sort of a pugilistic manner, if you know what I'm saying. And I think that, um, yeah, yeah, I do see that. But I guess my viewpoint of it, at least my personal viewpoint when it comes to things like that, is that, first of all, to each their own, everyone at the end of the day is trying to do what feels right to them. Um, but also, I feel like a lot of times uh, we bury our head in the sand because we just want our comfort back we want our routines back and we just want the evil negative thing to go away and we're willing to do anything for that to happen and i i suppose some degree of stoicism is absolutely necessary in situations like that in life you know it doesn't even have to be the covid thing you know a lot of times uh, you just have to persevere through the difficulties even though at the time it might seem like that's an impossible task you know it's just like going for a run, for example, and uh, when you start maybe five, ten minutes in, it's like, oh, fuck, I'm tired, I can't keep going on like this, and your mind keeps telling you to stop, to quit, but you just have to push through, and once you make it to the other side, then you're always more satisfied, and you've earned that good feeling that you get from this, and I can very much relate that to... Um, I suppose embracing the rebellion, especially if it's one that doesn't come from a place of insecurities, but rather 
a place of um, actually positivity and uh, it comes from a place of just doing what really feels right to you rather than what you're told is the right thing to do do you understand what i'm saying by that obviously obviously no but don't mis don't misunderstand me i mean I, i'm i'm very diplomatic myself during the uh, on a secular level uh, but in regards of in regards of things like black metal which is one of my main passion passions because it has to do with my my view of life my lifestyle my view of spirituality so uh, i embrace black metal as my as my wholeness in regards of spirituality and i think it's i think it's pretty um, it's pretty normal to have some sort of juvenile or also approach to to what you what you still think that it's your dearest thing right so that that's why that's why i talk about arguments i mean i never felt i never obviously i never had a fight in real life you know regard, about covid i i I, do, mm -hmm. I wouldn't care much about it so but no what what i mean is that what i mean is that obviously when you when you think about certain com concept and you hold them so dear to you um i have a view of i have a view of life that is very spiritual i have a view of art in general that is very spiritual and uh, i think that in the moment you embrace a form of art like black metal you need to accept the wholeness of it and uh, and if you and if you make it what you want of it, you should just go play something else. I think. I mean, it's it's a matter of it's a matter of of uh, respect towards the origin of something. Also, the the, the origin of, of of something. I mean, in in the moment you decide to label yourself in a way, it's because you really do believe it in in it. I do accept that there are there's the possibility to change things in your own way. I think that black metal is a form of art that is very dynamic, is very uh, avant-garde as well. So we've seen through the years that that black metal is perfect. is the is the kind of of musical extreme musical genre that is easily adaptable to yeah to any sort of changes and contaminations but the roots the core of the core of black metal is amoral is extreme is rebellious so pretending to conform this kind of thing to something that is moral and and is political or socially acceptable is bullshit basically you you did not understand anything about it if you if you think that black metal can be can be plastically made your own toy and you can feel you can feel safe with it in your hands it's not like that it's not like that it's like playing with fireworks isn't it you know you could uh, you could easily get your own hands blown off uh, when working with it but you have to like suppose embrace that that's the nature so many of it. times man it happens so many times and i think that you do you do know the same i mean in the moment in the moment you are uh, playing with it obviously you can burn yourself it's, it's the same with magic it's the same with some sort of sorcery some sort of sorcerer's art it's the same yeah, I, I appreciate that. And I, and I think uh, I do understand your point about uh, relating black metal to the current situation of the world and how um, I suppose if a lot of times it's a gimmick for people, then, uh, you know, that's one way where it could show itself. Um, you know, not the only way, but yeah, I suppose I, I understand that. It's that uh, you're playing with fire and uh, you know you're you're pretending that you are open to this danger you know never stop the madness but then as soon as someone points a gun to your head then it's like okay okay i'm gonna i'm gonna you know like sell all the shirts and then go go work for the bank or something you know i i, I get that obviously that's an extreme example but uh i i do understand that and uh, actually funnily enough I've been around this a lot, uh, especially back in Iran, 
because uh, you see people who get into it because they think it's cool, but then as soon as they have had just a couple of backlashes from the authorities or anything like that, then they uh, then they give up. It's like, oh, that's that's just not worth the hassle. Whereas, really, I personally believe that um, obviously no one should have to face that kind of bullshit for their art anyway. Doesn't matter what kind of art it is, but if you really understand the true potency and the power that is within an art form and lifestyle like this, then um, you would understand that that power and the freedom that comes with it is more valuable than almost anything else, I would say. say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think you can change the world with this thing. You know what I mean? You can You can change the course of many other people's lives just through the power of that music and through the power of expression, which uh, that and that obviously includes your own life as well. And I'm just wondering, what's your own personal uh, approach to black metal and uh, just how you perform this music? Because I look back at uh, even like your very first album and uh, it almost feels to me that when you're performing that music uh, in Fetus and Versa that there's riffs there, there's a theme there, there's uh, there's an album cover there which was done by uh, Holy Poison uh, designer uh, Dan- Mortis of Marduk, of course, and Funeral Mist, killer. And there's all of these different elements, you know, and you've obviously got Osmos Production releasing that. But to me, it almost feels like that the riffs are an excuse for something else, something greater to be channeled. How accurate would you say that is? And if you can sort of dive a bit deeper on your intent when it comes to actually performing this art form. Well, I think that actually everything starts from a vision and that vision is mainly spiritual. Um, and it has to do with some some form of, some sort, some sort of, uh, need of um, spiritual uh, spiritual research and constant spiritual de- development. Back then, uh, take on that when I when I wrote that album, I was eighteen years old, eighteen nineteen years old. So I was very young, and still I think that the um, uh, the, the the contents of the lyric is very valuable, and even if obviously uh my thought developed during the years but i think it's still very valuable there's one there's one big concept behind behind that album and and uh, and it has to do with the with the approach that with 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 the kind of attitude that man can approach death basically so it's i think it's one of the biggest theme of man in general and how to make how to make the moment we face death valuable if not with vi- with virtue basically so live a life in virtue and face death with strength and that's it on a on a satanic on a satanic perspective how do you how do you do it basically in the album, it goes step by step, and uh, and yeah, uh, what's the virtue? The virtue is Satan itself. So embracing that form of archetype, that form of value idea that that the figure of Satan encapsulates. In that moment, I was uh, still very much into. Um, judeo-christian concept of um, uh, of satan it developed through through the years and uh, yeah i managed to include into the into that concept things that come from different religions di- different sources and and in the end nothing nothing actually excludes that so um, uh yeah i i think that i think that still that album is very valuable for the for the value the intrinsic value that it has which is deeply satanic and uh yeah 
So having said that, what would you say is actually what defines uh, what you would describe as Satan for you? And uh, what do you think it is that has drawn you towards this particular path from early on? Well, actually, well, it's very, um, it's very cliche. As I'm an Italian, so I come from a um, uh, Catholic upbringing. So my family is Catholic. I was raised Catholic. And uh, at a certain stage in my in my life, I was I started being fascinated with uh, by 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 the nocturnal, by by the dark, the grotesque. So, pretty cliche horror movies, heavy metal, and this kind of stuff. And that actually put it put in discussion the foundation of of the religious belief i was uh, i was i grew up in so if i'm fascinated by it is it wrong or is it right or does there th there is any meaning to this wrong or right so the most the, the obviously the the the, um, the most instinctual thing to do was to rebel against the rebel against the the god himself and to and to and to explore the dark side and to embrace it pretty naively also in the beginning um but yeah through studies researches obviously you uh, you get to uh, you get to understand more and you get to understand that uh sa satan satan in some in some ways rebellion and not just rebellion is freedom it means freedom and this can be this can be seen on a very on a very mature way also i mean i don't want to go deep into uh, into the different into the different strains of satanism and uh, we i think that we all know enough about it so i think I think that once you once you acknowledge that there are um, that there are um, adversarial forces that that live uh, on a certain plane, and you feel like embracing them on multiple levels, like the social one, the secular one, and the spiritual one, you need to understand that they bring change. And what's the, what's more valuable than change? and what brings development but change change is the is the, is the rule so there there's this dynamic force between uh, in between rebellion and adversarialism that that actually yeah lies into li lies into the concept of change i think so these this is on a on a very superficial level. On a deeper level, I mean, there's much more, and uh, we can explore. We, we we can explore a lot of it uh, through different ways, through, uh, through spir spiritual practices, through more mundane practices. But yeah, the more you the more you decide to go deep into in, in, into this concept and into, into this Luciferian concept, the more you have, have the opportunity to grow, I think. So the impression that I get from that is that also you almost view this as a form of exercise, correct? because it is that you're almost exposing yourself to this uh, force that and, and embracing these characteristics, which uh, to my own estimate, at least, are actually ancient and engraved within the universe and the matrix which we exist in. And the impression that I get from what you're saying is that you purposefully invite those kind of forces in, whether it's through different practices and things like that, and that is to uh, invoke change, basically, and ultimately freedom, correct? Well, it depends. I mean, uh, it's part of it. I think you you got it right, but uh, 
there's there's much more to it i think i mean it's not just that but you got it in some way yeah i think uh, i'm also reflecting a little bit off of my own personal view of this as well um uh my own views are far too complicated as i'm sure like it it is it is for all of us really um especially i think it's one of them things that the more time that you spend on this uh you realize it's not as black and white sometimes um on certain yeah yeah on certain aspect of life and things like that in general like once you understand the the coding of the universe i should say you know like how you've got certain rules which they they do not miss it's like pure mathematics uh, whether it's like things like uh, gravity or um you know like the, the the cause and effect is undeniable um but i feel that the force of uh, what we may recognize as satan in this world is uh, is something that uh, i uh, personally speaking i think is uh, is so much greater than just um just c- corruption you know like i think it's so much so much more than that. in fact i think it's the opposite of that in a sense because for me i think for a lot of us who uh, crave that freedom is there's a sort of um you know almost like satan's a key to break out of the prison and uh... i think that corruption is a is a term i will use just into a judeo christian frame of mm-hmm. the of the term i think that's probably because you are you you speak arab right and uh, uh, i speak farsi but i know tiny bits of arabic yeah okay okay so maybe maybe because the translation will bring you directly to that kind of concept right uh yeah sure i guess yeah yeah of course i mean it's like that in in all uh, at least in the main monotheistic religions that is the definition of satan is is that it's uh, distractions you know and that sinning is sort of missing the point and that it's temptations and that's the that's sort of what what satan does uh, according to them but yeah but still I, i think that during the years i tried to i tried to evolve um my i tried to evolve my approach to um, to spirituality uh trying to remove these um these judeo-christian chains because actually there's so much there's there's so much shit behind i mean the 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 this kind of religion i think that the the whole idea of the whole idea of the christianism and the and catholicism in, in particular i think is that is lies exactly in the in the term of really on, on in the real meaning of religion itself which is which is for which comes for, from the latin religare which means to enchain so to enchain the people to a certain idea to 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 to, to christ and christ as a symbol that as a, as a symbol doesn't 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 really mirror in fact what what it is probably and um yeah i mean i tried to i tried to free myself from this kind of from this kind of influence because i think that on a moral level um it's really it's really powerful on a on a moral level on a psychological level so if you work with uh, if you try to free yourself from a certain structure i think you have to i think you have to try to be devoid of certain concepts so i try to avoid to think it, to think a concept like satan and rebellion in a in a exclusively christian way and i try to go back to certain to uh, yeah certain philosophical concepts even or even more pagan concepts that would embrace um the totality of the meaning of of that of the character in a way that is devoid of that of that concept of the corruptor meaning the the corruptor or the adversary 
So trying to trying to annihilate completely the idea of this of this dual dualistic battle between evil and uh, and good, in a way. Because, yeah. because because what I think in the end is that I mean the that spirituality is amoral uh, should be should should be completely devoid of morality of the uh, of uh, yeah of, of of this of this dualistic approach to morality. I think that's a very valid point, and uh, and I think when it comes to the morality side of it, you got to understand that everything that uh, takes place within the universe, everything has a price, right? Uh, and that is from the smallest of things to, to the biggest of things, whether it's as a physical thing or just like something that you say to someone out loud, everything will have a cost somehow, right? You know, um, and... I think that uh, when it comes to something like that, it's uh, it's a lot more complicated than just sinning or just being corrupt. Uh, because, you know, I think that when it comes to the case of uh, organized religion, especially, the way that I look at it personally, uh, and I was actually speaking to someone about this very recently, is that I sort of see them as brands, you know, to me, I see Islam and Christianity and Judaism as some kind of like a branding thing. You know, it's like a package. It's like a fan club almost, you know. But for, say, it's like McDonald's or Mercedes-Benz or something like that. Because I feel that what they're selling, I think that the thing that they're trying to sell is there. And there is something universal that... I believe, has the characteristics of what they're trying to preach, absolutely, because the similarities between all of them, and then when you do actually apply certain elements within religion to life, you do see that, okay, it does kind of make sense. The part where it goes wrong, I feel, is that they're trying to encapsulate something far greater and universal to their own sort of label or brand. Does that make sense? And I feel like this is actually where the true, if you want to call it, sinning occurs, because that's where it's truly missing the point, because I feel like there's, there's something common between all of them that I feel like we should all be focusing on. However, uh, we're all focusing on the wrong fucking things, and this applies to all of the devout religious people, and also non-religious people as well. I feel like there's something else there within spirituality, within, you know, there, there's this, other, there's too many patterns within the universe uh, that occur throughout life and certain events and just little, there's, there's too many signals and there's too many signs uh, being thrown at us, especially once you really open yourself to these things to just simply downplay it. Do you know what I mean? And I, I feel like there's, there's way more to this whole thing than just what any of those religions have to offer. But I also think that there is validity to a lot of what they have to say as well. It's just that it comes through the wrong, comes through the wrong vessel almost. Obviously, I I agree, and um, yeah, I can tell you I can tell you a personal experience I had recently because I I went recently to um to a funeral uh, and yeah I attended I attended this funeral and it was one of the saddest thing I I participated recently because actually not because of the of the sense of mourning for the for the for the dead but. For the emptiness of the ritual, just for the emptiness of the ritual, because the, because actually, what really yeah, what really saddens me is that the materialistic approach that that religions have nowadays um, is palpable even from the side of the preacher, even from the side of the priest. So, what is I mean, what 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 is the meaning of this of this thing nowadays? Basically, they are selling this product, as you say, it, it, since you use this 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 word brand, mm -hmm. and they they are selling this product, which is actually the most valuable product that people that humanity uh, that for for humanity, because actually what, what they are selling is 
is something that fills the emptiness humans feel in the moment we are born, in the moment we are aware of our our finitude, of the fact we are aware of the fact that we will land at some point. So what what are they? They are selling us. They are selling us. Yeah, let's let's let, let's find that let's find a term. Let's find a term for it. Uh, uh, They're selling us reassurance. Reassurance. Yeah. Reassurance. That if you do the right thing, then you will be safe. Because what is the thing that we're all afraid of the most? Death, obviously. Even though, really, once you truly embrace spirituality and the reality of life, you will understand that uh, death is not the end of things. And But but every person... And I, this is, you know what? Very interesting little thing here. All religions do uh, point out the the shames that can be caused by the ego yet they all identically have this very egotistical approach to things that the that we're better than everything that we're better than a you know that that you know we can it almost like gives you this false sense of you can do whatever the fuck you want and, and get away with it as long as you ask for forgiveness and you know and and you can you can cause as much damage to the environment and to the planet as as you want but you know as long as you ask for forgiveness then you can get away with it there's this really weird thing when it comes to religion and i feel like um that uh when you have that sort of approach then obviously death becomes terrifying because uh, you don't want to lose the ego, you know, and this is nothing against the ego either, by the way, it's a very helpful tool in life, but uh, it is something that in the context of spirituality um, uh, can be ma manipulated highly both ways. And I think that when people find themselves in a situation where their ego is threatened by death, they look for solutions. And I feel like religion is almost like creating a problem and then selling you the solution that okay well this is what happens with death but here's a here's a solution you know as long as you do what we we tell you to do then uh you know then then you should be fine there's nothing to worry about exactly yeah yeah i agree i agree and i think when you even see the structure of a church uh, i feel like there is more to it than that as well i do feel like submitting to some of these religions can be actually a very dangerous thing because, okay, let's say death has occurred, but uh, it worries me what happens uh, to the essence of uh, oneself after that occurs, you know, because I feel like there's, there's like a, you may, I mean, you look at the uh, Kaaba in Mecca, for example, and uh, that's just a massive energetic field where people are uh, around the globe are feeding their focus and attention to and you know uh, especially as a creative you will understand that anything in life that you put your focus and attention to you are giving that thing power right yeah absolutely and i that, think i think that yeah. most most of yeah uh, most of the believers are unaware of the of what they are feeding actually in this way i mean they are completely unaware think about that what 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 kind of egregore did we feed by believing that that COVID was the end for humanity or mm. anything like that? Very, what did very, we what, what did we what did we give power to by believing that that yeah the vaccine was the god saving us from evil? I mean, this is a this is this is yeah this is one of the problems of modernity. Uh, we are completely unaware of, on a spiritual level, or on a subtle level, uh, of what we are, what we are feeding with our thought, with our, with our, um, with our focus, with our, with our mind. And yeah, one of the problems of modernity is that we are meant to believe that reality is just, is just pure materiality and there's nothing beyond that and you have to i mean going back to to religions 
going back to religions in in a in a country like in a country like Italy, this is more this becomes more even much more a paradox actually because actually you have this interplay between the Vatican and the and the state. And they go hand in hand. They take, they almost take political decisions together. And still, you want me to believe that I have to believe science, but still, I have to believe to the church as well. So, yeah, I mean, how can we be so dumb on a on a certain level? I mean, how can people be so dumb? I mean, the science thing really it's uh, the science tm you know it, that became its own religion recently yeah yeah exactly that's that's what i mean that's what i mean so we are making of materiality our religion we are making of science our religion we are putting our 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 spiritual beliefs into into something that is devoid of, of any spiritual qualities and actually works for some material goods so yeah but don't you think that is very interesting that doesn't matter what we do the state that we're at we always we will find ourselves sort of almost being drawn to the same types of actions the same uh, series of events uh, even in the absence of religion, we're still making those same thought processes and events out of other things, you know, where it's like the same mentality that led us to witch burnings is now leading us to, uh, I mean, I saw something the other day, which I thought was fucking crazy. Uh, someone very close to me was looking for, um, for like some flats just to live in, right? And this is in in the UK. And she sent me this link of this uh, fucking um, place that they were like renting out this room, and it said something like, like the at the very top, you know, it said something like five hundred pounds for you know monthly rent, bills included, and then after that, the very first thing that it said, uh, attention, no uh, non-vaccinated people allowed to live here and no non-vaccinated people are uh, allowed entry into the flat and then it went on to say some other crazy shit like you're not allowed to fucking bring uh, you know like non-kosher or halal meats into the building and some like fucking crazy shit and it's like i'm thinking about that and i'm like you know we've protected these ideologies so now it's become a thing of like oh well everyone's everyone's entitled to want that that's their house so they're you know they're allowed to do that but that's literally the same as saying it, at least in my estimate that's the same as saying like oh yeah so that someone who's disabled is not allowed to come and live here or for example someone who is a Muslim or a Sikh or an atheist, you know, like you pick one of them and then say they're not allowed to live here. Or you say a black person, they're not allowed to live here. It's just a different kind of prejudice. It, and it seems that that religious way of thinking of us and them, that what we know and what we think is right, seems to, uh, we somehow seems to find ourselves back in the same place, regardless of what it is that we've occupied ourselves with. And uh, I think... I mentioned Mortis earlier, actually. I'm pretty sure that he mentioned this in an interview himself, where he said that religion's kind of gone from the world, and you can see now what's replacing it. Yeah, and there are worse enemies right now. There are worse enemies than, than religion for for people fighting fundamentalisms like, like us, let's say. Yeah, yeah, no, I absolutely agree, actually. It, it's it's quite fascinating because uh because in the medias in in Italy they are depicting they are still depi be, depicting Great Britain like the country that that didn't went along with all the rules we had in Italy France Germany um, yeah so it's it's why it's quite weird for me to hear that from you because because i thought that in great britain actually the brain the level of brainwash was a bit milder compared to compared to my country but yeah uh nice to see nice to see 
<laughs> I suppose. I mean, it's... Uh, don't get me wrong. I think there's a lot of really old school thinking people in Britain who just won't budge and they just won't do anything. But they won't do that, I think, mostly out of close-mindedness rather than... Do you know what I'm saying? You know, like the really old school way of thinking, you know, where like they, they don't know what even the map of the world looks like. You know, they just don't like being told what to do. And that's kind of like, in a way, I have to be honest. And I know this is like as someone who is, well, I guess officially an immigrant and as someone who, you know, actually performs art, I shouldn't really take their side. But I kind of really like that about it. And I just wish that the metalheads and the black metalheads had had just a little bit more balls like those people. You know, like the kind of people that like in America you see always that it's like the government's trying to like come and build something near their place and they come out with their shotguns. It's like, fuck you, get out of my back lawn. You know, I like that. You know, I think that's fucking great. You know, like I wish more of us thought like that rather than just be so go along to get along. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think in Britain, that's kind of, it's probably mostly that mentality that comes in when it comes to not following the rules. Uh, I think they tried to put us in another lockdown at the beginning of last year, I'm going to say. No, sorry. Uh, at the beginning of uh, this year, actually, it, it, I, I kind of got the vibe around January time that like after Christmas, we were going to go into lockdown again. But then obviously shit came out about them. Uh, about the prime minister himself having a massive party down on, um, you know, so it was like, I don't think they could do that anymore. And and great, you know, I have a feeling, you know, I mean, like, look at it like this. I know this sounds conspiratorial and not as much of a spiritual subject, but uh, you yourself, I'm sure you've had experiences where, um, you know, you, you talk to someone about something and then you see that thing pop up on like Facebook adverts later, right? Yeah. So I think of it like this. I mean, I had a really crazy fucking one like that recently where uh, we were we went to Hellhammer. Well, the Triumph of Death's sound check yesterday. Right. Uh, which was fucking awesome. You know, I'm really grateful. My friend, uh, she she took us there and then we uh, we met Tom and the band and you know got to watch them sound check before the show. Awesome. Awesome experience. But it was really fucking weird because about 15 minutes later, uh, I mean, I didn't check my phone that much. Uh, we were at the shop uh, down the road, and I just quickly checked my phone. And, you know, like sometimes you check your phone, and then you lose your train of thoughts, and you just start scrolling, like without thinking what you're doing. So I just clicked on Facebook, and the first thing that I see is their bass player popping up on my people you may know section on Facebook, you know, saying you may know this person. And then it gave me the, obviously it gave me the option to add them. Right. Which is fucking bizarre. But the, the point, point that, that I was trying has to do more with Bluetooth, but yeah, I will tend to say also that you entered into a sort of NSA echo chamber because yeah. it seems that Tom Gabriel Fisher is a bit, is a bit pro establishment. No, Maybe, maybe that 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 is a possibility. You don't want to you don't want to go too deep into it, right? <laughs> maybe not. Uh, I think uh, yeah. But the the reason why I actually mentioned that, right? Because obviously it could be anything that causes causes this. You know, it could be geographical or whatever. But the reason why I mentioned that is because we were talking about the lockdowns, and I have a feeling this is purely speculation, personal one. No one's given me any information that confirms this or says this might even be a thing. This is just purely me making shit up in my head. But I wonder if there's some sort of like an AI system where you can listen to the conversations between people and you can already make out what the general public is thinking. And you know that if you did something, then they would run to the streets and they'd fucking burn everything down. So that's probably why they didn't do it. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. It wouldn't be surprising if that was a thing, would it? Well, no. 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 I think at the level of... Uh, um, yeah. Uh, I mean, we are we are starting talking about artificial intelligence. And yeah, I think that 
that nowadays technology is really scaring for yeah for the for yeah the, i'm not um I, i'm i mean i'm trying to build my life in a way that is a bit more uh, is a bit less uh, controlled by by these kind of things to be honest i think that's 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 where that's where the the root of health physical and mental lies nowadays i mean if you if you want to if you want to build a life for yourself that is healthy that is healthy and and for healthy i mean that brings you to self development etc i think that yeah well, one one secret weapon one secret weapon is definitely to to get to try to get rid of certain modernity mo modern concept and modern instruments uh yeah i think i, I think social media and so but no, yeah not just not just not just technological i mean if you think about you think if you think about also the way we nourish ourselves ourselves and yeah food uh physical health all these i mean it's so it's so polluted by modern bullshit that i think that yeah i couldn't agree more man i, I mean i think you already kind of know my stance on things like that anyway but uh, this is one of the main main reasons why i encourage everyone to partake in um, just actually building physical strength learning uh, how to do combat things like that uh, i mean you still do you still uh, train uh, fighting uh actually no since the beginning of covid guess why no don't guess <laughs> <laughs> no i started i started um i couldn't get into a gym since uh beginning of covid and i still i still do not uh even if actually they lifted all um, all the all the mandates here right now i'm living in germany i moved from from italy to germany during the um, during the second lockdown uh one year ago right now and no but also um, i started yeah i started partaking into other kind of other kind of sports i'm i started lifting i started powerlifting one year ago and uh, yeah i i felt like building some strength after years of cardio after years of fighting i felt like building some strength after actually would have been beneficial for my for my body and for my mental health as well and it is actually i'm pretty proud because i because i i can i can see I started seeing pretty quickly some uh, some change, some development, and yeah, it's it's working. It's working. I'm loving it. That's awesome to hear, man. It's such a honestly, it's such a crucial part of life. And I mean, uh, I didn't really start doing anything until about four or five years ago. You may have seen older pictures of me when I was about, uh, I think, like forty kilos heavier. Uh, and uh, until that point, I never did anything. But once I started, and some time went by, and I made like some serious progress, I was like, "How the fuck did I even live before I started doing this?" Like it's almost like anything I did before that in my life that I thought was a form of legacy or like even some friendships and things like that. It was like it's almost like you're not even in control of it. You you you're not experiencing life in the way that you really could or should be if you're not uh putting into some putting in some time and effort into physical development i think it is so fucking important uh and it's like 90 95 percent of it is for mental um benefits anyway the physical i it's say not is... just mental i think it's very spiritual i think that sure. living in a living in a healthy and uh, functional body actually is much more it's much more deeper deeper meaning than than just that i think that i mean if we take for granted the stance that that the body is an expression of the soul actually what's my what's my point i need to respect i need to respect my body i need to respect the, this incarnation and i need to be grateful for it and how do i honor it if not actually taking care of it and being strong. I mean, 
I am a, I, I want a strong soul. I need a strong body. That's it. Absolutely. And I mean, you know, uh, I mean, even doing squats and deadlifts, that's just channeling of Kundalini energy. You know, like the more Same you goes use for fighting. Same goes for fighting. I think that fighting is much more is much more is much more cruel than that because actually because it, it, it actually uh, brings you to confront yourself with your biggest fears, the fear to fail. Uh, I think it's much bigger on, on an egoic level in the moment you are confronting with another with another with another human. While while you're while you're squatting, you are just fighting against yourself. So there's less friction on a on a on a personal and deeper level as well. So of course. Oh no, I I agree with you. I agree with you. I think that sport is sport is fundamental. Absolutely. But don't you also think, you know, to that point, uh, of course, like when you're fighting, you're fighting another person, but in a way, your biggest opponent is also just yourself, right? Obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's your it's yourself, it's the other, and yeah, it's your fears. I mean, it's the the the, the interplay is is huge, I think. I think is huge. And um what I'm noticing actually is that during during fighting, actually, you, you have no time to think. You don't have much time to think. While when while you're lifting, actually, you have lots of time to, to think. Hmm. Also, the also the recovery, the, the times for recovery are 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 different. So I started enjoying listening podcasts and audiobooks during uh, during this this last year of of yeah of lifting because otherwise i wouldn't have while doing sports i always run a lot so i always love to listen to music or to listen to podcasts during running especially when you yeah well when you have those long one hour and a half runs and you manage to listen half the rogan podcast <laughs> yes <laughs> it's <laughs> not more but yeah um no, I think that during during fighting, actually, the the, the um, probably the most spiritual thing that happens is that you you approach with respect, silence. I mean, you notice hum humbly, um, with humble with humbleness, actually, what silence is because your mind your mind probably also for on um. On a neurological, uh, on a neurological level, has to shut down because the because the mechanism that that you have to you have to face in that moment is the fight or fight and fly. So mm -hmm. fight or fly. So or you think or you get a fucking jab on your nose. So that's it. Very and true. In that moment you don't think. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's a, it's a very quick problem solving, isn't it? I think it's just you're. I guess there is something insanely therapeutic in the in the almost the insanity of it that you're so focused on that moment. You've got nothing else to think about, so it's almost a meditative kind of state in a way. Absolutely. Also, the kind of yeah, the the kind of tiredness you feel after after a fight after after a few rounds i mean it's it's completely different from from the tiredness you feel after lifting it's it's it feels almost deadly i think it's one of the things that gets gets closer to death by exhaustion probably i mean imagine imagine fighting for 12 rounds it's crazy I can't imagine fighting for twelve rounds. Fucking hell, man! <laughs> oh yeah, obviously I cannot. I cannot even because I never fought for for twelve rounds. But imagine, imagine a professional boxer fighting mm -hmm. for twelve rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've mainly, as far as uh, obviously, I've done weightlifting for four or five years now, which has just changed my life completely. But as far as uh, combat sports, I've just been doing it uh, about a year now. I've been doing a bit of kickboxing. So kind of the opposite of yourself, actually, in terms of uh, how long uh, and, and what thing we've done. And uh, it's great. It's uh, It offers you a sense of uh, humility, I guess, which you really need. 
because I think that um, every man thinks that he is uh, he's going to be victorious, that he's better than everyone else, and that that what you do is better than what everyone else does. You know, it's like a it's like a inherent like fucking evolutionary thing that's in our system you know it's that that you you you're the top dog in your own world every every person is the protagonist of their own story and i think that martial arts are extremely crucial because uh they don't just make you humble in the sense that they make you feel like worthless or anything no not at all but they actually give you an understanding of where your skill set is at and what you are actually capable of and and that you can develop on this and that you can get better rather than just be left with a template from birth and just assume that you are you are really good at something or vice versa sometimes you might be surprised at how good you are you know but i think that that humbleness and that sense of putting you in touch with reality is extremely important and also i think and I'd be curious to hear your take on this as well. But I also feel like that the people who don't partake in these kind of activities are often the ones that actually push for violence. They're the ones that push for civil war and things like that because they don't understand the value of life and how it has to be earned. Don't you think? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree. I think that yeah, um, the, the the people that push for for violence are normally unaware of what violence involves. So, yeah, I've seen that happening many times. I mean, who's the first guy who uh, who starts a fight? The non-trained, non yeah, the non-trained guy who knows nothing about martial arts, never had a Never had a fight on a ring in his life. Doesn't know how to throw to throw a punch, and most of the times, if he's drunk, he's the one who collapses. So, yeah. And uh, uh, no, no, I agree on a on a broader scale. On a broader scale, if you think about who's taking decisions about wars, etc., it's people who have nothing to do with violence in real life. So. It's almost a fantasy to them, isn't it? Because they've just watched too many films and they see themselves as those characters and they think that that's where they actually stand. Absolutely. If you see nowadays, nowadays reactions to the Ukraine-Russia Russia war actually brought people who were the day before who were against war, against any kind of violence, brought them to this first row of, yeah, uh, interventism. Let's go. Let's sure. go everybody to war. Let's let's go everybody to war. Are you aware of what that involves? I don't think so. Are you aware of? I mean, no. I, I think that, yeah, but that has to do mostly with, with the level of manipulation that the media has managed to, man, managed to instill into, into people's minds. So uh yeah uh, pe people is not aware people is not aware but they think they are because the media tells them so that's it mostly yeah the propaganda exists both ways whether it's on the west side or whether it's russia you know it's just one's one's a little more obvious that's all yeah what's no no yeah what's what's crazy is that what is completely uh, what is completely what what completely disappeared from the um, from the newspapers nowadays is the is the idea of a dialogue between between the two forces so there's there's no possibility to make them dialogue anymore because who's pushing from one side and who's pushing from the other side actually are more powerful than the forces that are actually fighting on the on the ground probably so yeah it's just about propaganda it's just about propaganda and major economical interests but yeah you know um people loves to people loves to I'm, I'm i'm still very even if i'm quite old nowadays i mean uh i'm 30 34 years old and i think i i learned a few things about about the world uh i even studied law so I know I know a few things for sure about 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 how politics works. 
at least compared to the the common the common person i'm still surprised by the way by the way people approaches to certain teams i mean so i so mm-hmm. naively so naively i'm still very surprised but yeah that's it I'm glad that you mentioned that. This was exactly what was going through my mind a moment ago as well, is that we as human beings have this natural tendency just to pick teams, just to pick a side. Uh, we oftentimes fail to see the bigger picture because of these um, th- this sort of mindset and approach to things. It's always our tribe versus their tribe. And uh, it, it just goes on. And it's exactly that same mentality that we were talking about when it comes to the whole religion situation as well. And the branding, you know, it's almost like our brand versus their brand. You know, I mean, you look at like India and Pakistan. I mean, that's such a fucking complicated thing. But really, at the end of the day, that's kind of what it comes down to. You know, it's that, oh, yeah, you guys were wrong. And then we did this. And it's like, no, you guys were wrong first. And there's like there's this constant thing that we as human beings do, and it's very frustrating to me uh, a lot of times that um, there's a there's a real lack of mediators in this world uh, who have a voice where you can say, "Hey, can we actually sit down together and just talk?" But of course, as you mentioned, when you have things like absolute uh, financial interests in these things, um, it's hard for that voice of common sense and compassion to come through at a situation like that. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I think that, I mean, people people are obvious, people obviously have their own responsibility into it. I mean, not being aware of the fact that, that all these partaking into, 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 this team or the other actually has to has to do with one single reason of which is basically which is basically their 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 sense of the the sense of emptiness they feel that they try to they they they, they try to feel with uh, with this sense of identity basically so identity in this case can be can be politics in this other in, in, in this other case can be I don't know um, can be the war against vaccinated and non-vaccinated. So yeah, I think that this last this last three years basically gave gave us enough reasons to wake up and to try to and to try to find actually more into into our own selves than. Uh, then the sense of identity that derives from derives from the media derives from, from the events of the world but still still we 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 don't learn in some way or if we want to see it in a more in a, in a more optimistic way we are learning but the picture that that the media are giving us is that we are not yet so maybe it's just artificial maybe it's just artificial conflict because in the end, we all know that people want the majority of people at least wants to be left alone, wants to have their own life and do their own thing. So yeah, I think that most of the people who are fighting on social medias the whole day or yeah, wasting their life, wasting their life into conflicts, I think they are just really empty they're just really empty and there's nothing that will save them anyway yeah unfortunately uh i mean i'm a it's i have a, a weird i guess way of observing these things in the sense that i am absolutely an optimist generally speaking uh which is i know it's weird for a black metal person to say that but i am you know, and, uh, but at the same time, I do have those kind of thoughts as well. It's like, oh, can we really, you know, what, like, what can we do to, um, you know, the, like these, these echo chambers will always exist almost. And it's like, you can't even focus on it too much rather than, you know, you, you just got to focus on yourself because there's always, you know, like the thing of like Twitter and where people are just there and it's just a cesspool of fucking mental illness where people are just throwing shit out there without facing any kind of real consequences for it and um and by consequences i don't mean 
like i'm not talking about misinformation here i'm talking about insulting other people and not seeing what that does to another person on the other side of it and uh, just throwing things out there it's about in the end that's what it's about in the end mm -hmm. because I, I don't see i see very rarely on on tv and actually i'm not i'm not consuming much actually but the few times i do i see very rarely real dialogues i mean i see only stupid arguments stupid made up arguments that uh have this sense of i mean the, the the only the only meaning of these arguments is to instill into people the idea that that you can only you can only have conflicts towards mm. certain argue to, to, towards certain things so you cannot talk you cannot talk you just have to you just have to to have our to argue you just have to argue and that's the only yeah, way yeah. so basically it's pushing is pushing the pushing the the dialogue on a on a on a very broad conflictual way that devoid de devoids actually yourself from the possibility to to open up you cannot open up you cannot open up yourself you need to be dogmatic over certain themes and you need to be very ideologic that's it that's how yeah. you yeah. deal with these things. Yeah, and you only end up with the extreme ends of the spectrum, and there's not really many people in the middle. Uh, or at least, actually, uh, having said that, I feel that the majority of the people sit at the middle of a lot of things, you know, because people are unique. Everyone has their, you know, like one person has their own fingerprints, right? And, and that, you've got to apply that to everyone. Everyone's unique in that sense, and everyone has their own personalities, their own interests, and yes, there are things that we will have in common, and yes, there are things that we will uh, we will disagree on. Um, however, put trying to put people into one or like two boxes is never gonna work because that's just not gonna really uh, work out for us. And I think that especially well, one of the things that I find most valuable within black metal. Uh, since obviously that's kind of the the, the background of, of of both of us here and and what we're talking about, I feel that when it serves its potential in the way that it should, I feel that the good thing about black metal is that it removes all of those boxes, that you then enter territories uh, within the mind and on a social scale and on a spiritual scale that is outside of those and it very much embraces the journey of the individual would you say that's sort of your own personal approach to it as well could you could you elaborate the the, the, the question a bit in, in the sense that do you also uh, i mean this is kind of like a really obvious question i'm just giving you a bit of a leeway you know just to talk about um your feelings on this but um I'm just basically talking about how black metal is um, is a very superior tool for embracing individualism, which allows us to escape the the boxes which society tries to put us in. You know, like you're either left or you're either right or you're Democrat or you're Republican. And when you got black metal, you get out of all of those. You're just yourself. You're, it's just your own path in life and you're just following what feels right to you in a surrounded by... Uh, or not surrounded by, I guess, fueled by a sense of rebellion. Yeah, no, obviously, obviously, I agree on that. I mean, I, I think that at least myself, I started on a very ju 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 with a with a very juvenile approach into um, into into this into this genre. Uh, obviously, with the fascination of a with the fascination of a kid towards the darkness towards the the nocturnal and the grotesque and and uh, that was something that wasn't expressed uh, that wasn't expressed in uh, in in more in more i don't know uh, at the time but not, not just at the time but yeah any any time i think that that those 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 feelings, those those things, actually are, of are, are are some of those are some of those feelings and aspects that will make you always feel like a reject, 
into a into a sort of solar uh, bright society, right? I mean, which is actually what what our society are are hypocritical depicting themselves them, uh, themselves, but. Um, yeah, it opens up also to to an exploration of of the self that goes much deeper, goes on, goes into dark aspects and dark aspects that actually that actually are that are, are actually part of, of of humanity itself. I think are part of humanity, are part of are part of of man on a um, and being on a holistic level i mean we are always brought to think uh, humanity is always brought to think that uh, the solar the solar path is the right path but and on the other side on the other side a big mistake that um, that lots of satanic or black metal satanic adepts or black metal people tend to do is that the left hand path is just the sinistral path is just is just the path that embraces darkness on, on all levels so darkness nihilism well actually it's not well actually it's not what this is this is a misconception that derives from that derives from Christianism and from Judaism itself. So what we need to understand is that embracing spirituality on a, on a certain path uh, actually means to embrace, embrace the wholeness of, it, of all aspects of life, of all aspects of, of, of the being itself, and trying to merge them together and trying to put them in a way that that you can live in uh, accord to your principles and change and uh, grow because in the end what what really is the what really is our enemies is is staticity is is uh what's the, the closest thing to to death and with death, uh, and and I don't want to, and I don't want to think of that in a um, in a bad way in this in this moment. But I, but I think that I mean, what's the opposite of dynamism? What's the opposite of change? Staticity, mm -hmm. and we need to fight that, and that's it. That's it. I think you know that is such an important thing to keep in mind especially if one does decide to tread this particular um sort of unknown territories of the uh, left and path if you want to call it but to me uh it's the same situation as uh, kabbalah and klipoth if you want to if you want to go down that route you have to understand kabbalah to its full extent first before you can then apply that to the opposite. And I think that same thing applies to life as well, that it is important to embrace good health. It's important to embrace some kind of order in your life. It's important to embrace um, just general well-being because, you know, and just being a good person, at least whatever that's that's called, you know. And by, by a good person, I don't mean like go around fucking you know giving everyone a blowjob but i mean more so like actually you know just actually being being true and being honest you know rather than just because you now consider yourself a satanist then that means that you should never work a job that you shouldn't earn any money you should just be an asshole you should drink uh, and then do drugs and just completely fucking ruin yourself and you're cool That's yeah yeah bad. I mean, I, I think that everybody's free to to choose its own path. I mean, if if you feel called to that kind of path and you feel like expressing yourself into that frame, you're free to do mm -hmm. it. I think that we we all have the possibility to learn from the broadest kind of experiences. And uh, mm -hmm. I mean, in in my life myself, before developing in this way, I had certain I, I had certain other experiences that were probably more extreme, 
uh and uh, nowadays i'm trying to find more order into my in, into my way into my way of developing myself but i think that uh by knowing chaos you actually give value to it and give value also to what comes from it so yeah yeah i think that in the end everybody has his own has his own way to to embrace its its path so yeah i i, I don't feel like i don't want to sound too diplomatic on this point obviously because i'm not but I need to feel also. I mean, I, I'm, I'm. I feel also like not even just justifying, but but I need to. I, I need to. I need to to approve the fact that freedom is freedom at all levels. So the junkie on the street is free to be a junkie as well. I 100% agree with you on that. Uh, there is no um, uh, sort of, uh, th there's no pushback on that from my end. The, the point that I was trying to get to was more so from a perspective of, I mean, look, all of those things which I mentioned, I have personally done those things, right? Because I thought that it was now okay to do them or it was you know that it, i should have almost done them and i feel like that a big part of that is actually the pursuit of finding the the freedom within your own mind which is where it belongs anyway or your spirit if you will and i think it's a part of adjusting to there being no real guardian because you have cut off the hand of the guardians uh you know whether it's the religion or society you know you've you've cut off that hand and now you're left your own device and so i think that's just it comes in the territory of finding yourself to doing like you said the extreme things but the point that I was trying to make, or at least the conclusion which I was sharing, or maybe this is just me personally, but, you know, as I said earlier, the universe is very much, uh, it goes by a mathematical process, okay? Those things which I mentioned, I see those things as sort of events that can reduce the potency of one's spirit, you know? Like, for example, uh, watching porn all day and just jerking off and like you're just use, you're losing all of your energy and your spirit and your fire. And it's the same with, like I said, all those other things that I made an example of. To me, I believe that you can follow similar principles that are actually uh, preached within religion you know because some of them can actually be very good things you know and the fact that you're rebelling against a religion doesn't now mean that you rebel against all of those actions so for example it's like this right because since we're constantly coming back to the branding thing i'll make a good example on that if you hate McDonald's, let's call, let's, let's pretend McDonald's is like Christianity or Islam or whatever, you know. If you hate McDonald's, that doesn't mean that you should now stop eating food, okay? Does that make sense? Because then you can still, you can still appreciate uh, some of those things, just not through that particular vessel. And I believe that, uh, at least by the laws of our universe, I, uh, at least embracing things that are life-asserting, which, like I said, you know, a healthy mind, healthy body, healthy spirit, a good diet, a good training regimen, surrounding yourself with good things, good people, these are things that enhance the power of your spirit, now, what you choose to do with that afterwards, it's entirely up to you. I absolutely, I absolutely agree with you, yeah. but I also think that probably certain souls are not meant to develop in a certain way, so are meant to be more low level and are meant to live on that low level because that's what they deserve. I don't think that we are all made mm. in the same way. I think that probably even the, the the form of development that comes from before this incarnation is, uh, is, is still some influence on our actual incarnation. So if you are meant to live in a shitty way, 
it's because you probably also deserve it. No? I think, I think this is, you know, this is a situation where I feel like it would be so easy to dismiss that, but I think I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Um, it's, and it's, it's hard to explain because that's like, that goes into a whole other territory there. Um, I think where I'm coming from on this particular whole uh, topic is that I'm reflecting on personal experiences. I, you know, I agree. I agree with you. I agree. On a very basic level, I agree with you. But I also think that maybe that maybe some people don't have the don't even have the choice the way you do. Mm. Or at least that their choice will don't change much their reality. I mean, I agree with you on all levels. I think that I think that in order to in order to awake, you should do certain things. But yeah. If certain people don't, it's because probably they have not, they have not the, the genetic or the or the spiritual material to to do it. No, maybe, maybe so, maybe so. But I actually, um, that I get the thing of uh, sometimes there are certain things that will happen within a person's life that you can't really control and that maybe a person is just cursed from the get-go. I can kind of see that, but, uh, you know, so your point, you know, you're, you're probably correct in that sense that there's a lot of people born into today's society by people who probably shouldn't be having children, right? But because the comfort is provided and that the all of the solutions are there, then they can get away with that, right? So in that particular sense, I can I can agree with you. But having said that, not just that. Yeah. If you think about the amount of human material that, by walking on the street, you could feel like it's basically a waste. No. I mean, sure. 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 People who walk on the street and have zero zero uh, zero idea of what they're doing, or zero zero idea of what they're thinking. So that's basically wasted oxygen no but I, I still do. yeah no unfortunately I, I i i hate to say it but i i do agree with that uh in the sense that i sometimes think of it like this you know uh you got people who are walking around and they're so depressed and they're like they're thinking about like killing themselves yet they're uh, you know and that's a, that's a real issue by the way but at the same time, these people have access to food. They have got they've got roof over their heads, you know. So they're they're using all of these resources, but it's like there's so little purpose there. Like they're taking so much, and they're still thinking about that. Do you know what? Do you know what I mean? So it's almost like there's a there's a very cynical part of me that just sees the resources that's being used on the earth. It's like it's it's such a waste, you know, because so many of these people are simply just existing and just taking everything and. And but the the thing probably, where probably probably can... it's most of humanity probably it's most of humanity probably it's I million, think so too. billion and billions so I think so too and, and the purpose of many of them is simply just to pay off a mortgage sit at home watch the new TV show every night and just keep consuming until they just die off it's almost like they're being used as little disposable batteries but I think also the part where I can interject and the part where I can actually be a bit of a mediator in this is the fact that um i mean obviously i've always been a different person but i can still see how who i was maybe six or seven years ago was like that you know and i'm not saying i'm, I'm perfect now and that you know I'm, I'm king shit no no i'm i'm still far from perfect but um at least i've recognized some of those things and i'm working on there but i understand what you're saying that there's a lot of people who just simply exist and there's there's nothing there's no other point to it so to that to that sense i unfortunately i do have to agree but also i know i'm going on a bit a bit of a tangent here but um the so i will stop you I will me... stop your second i will stop your second sure, i want sure. to i want to i want to go on with this because I, it's actually pretty interesting and uh, yeah um by all means what if what if actually this was by design 
what if actually this was by design that most of the persons on this planet actually have to be deprived of, of their individual of their individuality or of their ability to evolve spiritually i mean it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty easy to detect the fact that millennia ago uh humanity was actually more spiritual and uh and nowadays we are so materialistic that we have lost even the ability to conceive that there's some there's some spirit or there's some soul to our own individual. So we basically introduce certain concepts like ego and in, in, into into our own voc vocabulary. But actually, what was before that? There was the spirit, there was the soul. So what if by design, actually, we are we are not meant anymore to, to try to create a dialogue with certain forces? Or think about death. Think about death itself. Think about death as a concept. I mean, nowadays, nowadays society is trying to 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 give away the possibility to think about death as a as a way out of life i mean we we think about we, we think about death as the end and that's all in the material in the, in the materialistic viewpoint death is the end of everything and that's it right because death is viewed as the end of materialism and hence why it is considered a sad event in materialistic view there's no possibility that there's anything anything after that right mm -hmm. but the evidence we have and this is pretty funny actually and it's pretty evident the evidence we have is that just a few centuries ago, we started thinking about that. We as humanity started thinking in this way. Because before, right before that, for millennia actually, and we have all the texts, all the texts of all cultures, of all populations on the world that actually, that actually think about the opposite, that life goes on in another form, but life, life goes on. This is well, it. Well, well, we know... I mean, this is uh, this has been such an ongoing theme in my life, but this fundamental understanding has always been there. Uh, we know, first of all, that everything in this world is energy. And we also know that energy never gets created or destroyed out of nothing. It only changes format, and that's exactly what death is. This is also another big hypocrisy of nowadays world, because actually we are trying to reconcile uh, to reconcile concepts like spirituality and science, well, actually, there are some there are some strains of science that nowadays, like like uh, quantum physics, are much more spiritual than than spirituality than modern spirituality itself. So, what are we talking about? I mean, um, I think that I think that this is one of the biggest hypocrisy of modernity, trying to deprive men uh from from one of his basic stance which is the which is the search for the other which is the search and the acknowledgement of the other that's it i think so too and you know uh, when it comes to things like for example uh, the paranormal or anything spiritual uh, it's almost like we're given this uh, menu of options where it's like well it's up to you if you want to believe or not to believe, rather than why have we experienced these events? How can we really study them rather than simply just leave them to some like goofy TV shows? And I feel like, um, well, I've, now I'm going to also say that I am pretty certain that there's plenty of uh, actual evidence there and research and things like that, which are just kept away from the public for whatever reason, you know, maybe it's, it's for a good reason uh, of, of safety that we don't have access to that information as well. I'm very, very open to that idea, but also... Or maybe it's not just safety, or it, maybe it's just to to try to keep certain, certain human abilities obscure, to avoid mm -hmm. a certain development of the human mind, of the human persona. I mean... Yeah, yeah. well, why do you... 
why do you think that would be the case? What? Sorry. Uh, why do you think that would be the case? Uh, I'm 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 intrigued in this, uh, obviously. But let's say that is that is true. Why would we? Uh, why is it necessary for us to be kept in our little prison box or for our mind, body, and spirit? Well, uh, I could answer you first. I am not the one who's keeping you in chains so i cannot answer you but i think that but i think that because the human has much more potential than what we are taught probably i mean uh of course it's it's pretty it's pretty easy i mean it's even even on a physical level i feel i feel like you if you are training are just one of the probably one percent of the people on this planet who can probably i don't know lift 150 kilograms on a deadlift i don't know how many how, what's the percentage probably. of people probably two percent i don't know probably three percent I, i actually think it's probably a lot less than that if probably I'm a lot less Pro- yeah that yeah that, that, that would be funny but yeah that's it so Imagine the potential on a spiritual level by practice, by constant practice that we're taught by generation and generation until a certain point. I mean, the history of human, the, the history of humanity, I think it's so, it's so easily, it's so easily uh, money, m- m- manipulated. Yeah, manipulated. That, yeah. I think, we, I mean, there's, there's a lot i think uh, i'm opening doors now to to too many things and uh uh in in these days i think it's too easy also to be uh, to be taken as a complotist so yeah but the the important thing is that we've recognized that there's something there and that we are in search of finding that truth and i think that is the first and most important step of all Mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely but one has to feel open to this to certain experiences i think that nowadays i mean the main problem is that we are taught to not be open to these experiences i mean the moment i decided myself to open to open to certain to certain experiences they started coming all the all the magic is real all the yeah, yeah. all the sorcery is real all the dreams all the apparitions all these things are real because i decide to to i decide first of all to apply to my reality the belief that th- these things are possible I mean, on a, if you if you try to read reality in a very magical way, uh, belief is fundamental. Belief is fundamental. Will is fundamental. Desire itself is fundamental. And within this triangle, actually, according to yeah, certain personalities into the magic framework, you create magic itself. You create reality itself. So yeah. What would be some of the experiences that you've had that you think you might be able to share? Well, some of these actually are even um, are even part of the record. So I wrote about the about certain of those in the into the record themselves. And um, I'm very curious now. Uh, one of the one of these one of the most recent actually is in the in the last album in uh, Historia Nocturna. Actually, I talk about in the in the visit that the song is called the visit. Mm-hmm. And the lyric is about this this very this very uh, dark encounter I had one night in uh, in this in between states between sl- sleep and awakeness. So in this liminal state, well, I was actually falling asleep, and or probably I was already asleep, and. Uh, I felt on my leap a dark figure, um, a dark feminine figure that was basically giving the best, giving me the best blowjob of my life, to put it, to put it, <laughs> to put it easily. And 
I couldn't see I couldn't see her face because it was covered by by her hair and uh, and the whole the whole figure was very smoky it was very smoky over my over my lip and uh, and then at some point it's as if that that reality which was which was more um, more mundane in a way um broke up and this sort of veil fell and uh, i um, uh, and oh, and they started hearing also these cracking noises coming from all around and um i was in in bed so you can imagine i was completely paralyzed and the figure disappeared and i passed from this dreaming state to another and and I felt like this flaming. I, I felt. I, I felt, and I saw. Um, uh, I saw with my eyes, and I. I can tell. I can tell you, like in a. I don't know. In a. In a psychedelic. In a psychedelic trip that, is more real than real, I, and I saw this figure with flaming, flaming red hair, looking at me. And first, scaring me. I mean, I, I instantly felt this sense of this sense of who are you? What are you doing? What what do, what do you want? What do you want from me? And um, after a few seconds, so in, in, like breathing the energy that that the fire of this figure was was inundating into the room, uh, I felt instantly calm. I felt instantly calm, and I felt like embracing. Uh, embracing it so obviously by looking at by 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 listening to the um, by listening to the story you will think obviously that uh, the two figures are actually very nocturnal very dark very uh, very demonic in a sort of way and the first might be might be um might be a sort of succubus if a sort of succubus sent from the other creator and the other creator what what it is i mean the light the the fire uh it's obviously it's obviously a sort of incarnation of lucifer right will be an incarnation of lucifer of satan and uh, this demonic this demonic figure giving me this sense of warmth giving me this sense of this palpable sense of um calmness actually actually made me feel like i am on the right path in a sort of way mm. so yeah this is this this is this is one this is one it's very fascinating, man. And uh, so you were basically almost in like a sleep paralysis state, but then you went through like the, the realm of almost like lucid dreaming in the midst of that, correct? Yeah, exactly. It was mm -hmm. a, it was a, I mean, I, I, I both had lucid dreams and uh, sleep paralysis episodes in my life. And it was a, it was a in between. It was very weird. It was a very weird episode, but yeah. Yeah, Other times, I felt like I felt like receiving lyrics. Uh, it happened. It happened once in the in the second album. There was one. Uh, there was one lyric that was basically received. I, I, I wrote by I don't know. Um, I wrote during one night, and I didn't even remember what what I did that night. So it was probably. It was probably. I mean, I I feel like I'm very open to concept like domain, the demonic possessions and stuff like this. So uh, I'm very open to the idea that we as humans uh, are able to receive to receive a concept, to receive um, uh, to to receive ideas, and to be possessed by certain things like. Uh, I mean, demons and geniuses, genius. Uh, how I mean, I, I, I've I've listened to the um, very recently. I've I've heard about it a lot. Uh, it's probably even Joe Rogan that talks about it a lot. If you if you if you hear to to his podcast recently, he's probably 
is probably he went through this kind of idea very very often recently uh, about the idea of receiving ideas re receiving concepts and i think that it's a it's a very platonic idea as well it's a very it's a, it's a very yeah but there's a whole thing to that actually and is that there is this uh on possible understanding that our brains are actually uh they're like antennas right and that uh the intelligence is external rather than internal and that we are able to uh whatever frequency we choose to switch on to we receive that information and uh I mean, this is the first time I've talked about it since, but since you're sharing stuff, then I'll talk about it too. But, you know, I've had plenty of, um, I've had a few experiences actually, like the one that you mentioned that do, do stand out. Um, I can't say I've ever received a blowjob, so that's pretty unique. Uh, but, uh, just by the way, before I continue, I, I really have to ask you, were you actually physically feeling like a physical sensation through that? Okay very interesting so i do believe that there is this um that things like that happen you know and it's almost like there's this internal feeling like in in your stomach almost that like you that communicates with you i don't know whether it's your chakras or, or your energy field it's it's hard to pinpoint like the the science of it because i i do i do believe that the science and spirituality are you know they're like that it's just our understanding Absolutely. And I think that there's uh, there's definitely been moments in my life where, um, you know, there's just there's too many ex ex fucking uh, examples. But just one off the top of my head, there's a song on the next Trivex album called The Serpent's Gaze. And that is, I think, one of the one of our most powerful pieces ever, actually. And, you know, uh, that song in particular is relevant to mention here as well because your own vocalist uh, Bjorn, he's he's actually done some guest vocals on that song. Um, I know he's done guest vocals on every other band on, on the planet at the moment, but uh, he did he did something very special on that song. I think that yeah. I think that the, the stuff he partakes into is actually pretty special. So yeah, I think so too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, I think this in particular, you know, what he did on there was was really cool. But the reason. I bring up that particular song is that I I can I almost feel like I can't even take credit for writing it. You know, even though it was me who put it was my hands that 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 programmed like the the drums and I it was my hands that played the riff. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I feel, feel like, like how many times I, how, how many times did you write riff and you cannot remember how it happened and yeah. yeah. Well, it's like it it's a 9 minute song. And that was created and born within the space of half an hour. You know, all I did was one day I woke up and I was just, I was just sick of everything. And I just closed the door um, because my partner at the time uh, had left and I just wanted to be fucking left alone. And I close the door and uh, I tend to put a towel under the door wherever I go because I like to protect the energy of my environment. I've done this for years and I uh, I put the Trivex live hoodie that I had at the time, you know, I, I put that on and used to have an eye here right on the, on the forehead and put on some incense, turned off all the lights, closed the curtains. 30 minutes later, I have a nine minute song with the most insane harmony section in the middle that every time I listened to that harmony section that day, like after the song was done, whenever I listened to this harmony part, I would close my eyes. And whenever I closed my eyes, I would see a serpent staring back at me. And uh, I can't... And that's why the song is called The Serpent's Gaze. And uh, this is the first I've ever talked about that, but that's that's how that was created, and it that it's to the point that we are receivers. You know, it's just like sometimes things just happen; they they flow through us. You know, 
but I also feel like you know that can that can manifest in multiple different ways, and things in this world can get manipulated in ways that um, synchronicities or yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, for example, things like I think about, I spend a lot of time just be thinking about this. You know, um, moments like you know when, for example, uh, John Lennon got killed. You know, like the guy who did it afterwards. That's that's a very dodgy one to me because he he kept saying that in his head, he kept hearing "Do it, do it," right? And this sort of events. I'm probably almost, I feel like maybe even putting myself in danger by talking about these things, but it's like there's there's something else out there in this world that's that's going on. You know, like when you get, think of any sort of big figure in history. You know, obviously John Lennon at the time, he was he was someone who was like outgrowing Jesus, as, as they said, you know. And uh, you look at people uh, like, uh, do you remember uh, Senna from Brazil? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you know, like how fucking like popular he was and, and how big he was getting and how he was actually helping a lot of homeless people, things like that. There used to be uh, Tahti, who was a very famous uh, wrestler in Iran, very similar figure to Senna, you know, and, and these kind of people. Uh, I feel like there's something really weird that people in our times, they hit this threshold and they hit this potential and they get very very close to a moment of almost being a prophetic that that single person could change the world and whenever they come close to that i feel like those people get subdued and yeah, yeah but who knows which forces we are disturbing in other realities in other in other planes of reality Hmm. And I, I, this, what I say could be purely speculative, you know, because like I said, I mentioned Senna and it's like that, you know, no one killed him. He died in an accident, but I've watched that footage over and over and it just makes no sense. It's almost like something went into his head and was like, yeah, yeah, you're almost like to control. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you know <laughs> there's, there's there's a lot of very very interesting things in, in in our world and um i appreciate your your candidness in talking about that you know and you know what I'll, i've also got to tell this because uh, i mean i'm sure you guys will probably talk about it later but i can see why fetus inversa is touring with Atlas because that that now makes perfect sense <laughs> especially i mean i don't know if you've seen uh, my episode with kyle but uh, he uh, yes i did yes i did yeah, yeah. Oh, and i can tell you that um, years ago, uh, I um, I started writing with with Kyle. Years ago, I met him only once uh, at Kings of Black Metal some years ago. I think he was playing with uh, Nightbringer, and cool. um, and I think that yeah, uh, we started talking about touring together uh, after Historia Nocturna came out, and he sent me the he sent me the. Um, the last Atlas album before it was released, and I basically devoured it. I devoured it. I think it's one of the best black metal records being released in in yeah in the last decade for sure. And uh, I am personally honored to yeah to to tour with uh, with Atlas because because they are one of the best black metal bands nowadays. I think I think I, I think Kyle is a is a great personality. And uh, the way he's exposing himself also over certain topics like the bullshit they were, they were, uh, yeah, they were they, they were passing by with with antifas and shit. Actually, he's making him honor. He's making him honor, and he's showing actually the only way you should you should deal with this with with this bullshit. I think. Thank you, man. I, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I think I think so too. You know, because uh, as you can see, I'm not, I'm not exactly, um, I'm just interested in the truth. You know what I mean? That's just, that's the thing that, that I care about. And when I say the truth, I don't mean the truth that I want to hear, but rather the truth, right? You know, so sometimes you, you, you hear what, something that, um, you know, maybe you don't like, but that's okay. Right. And, uh, and I think, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I very much appreciate having him on here. And, you know, there was a very interesting pattern to that as well, because um, I've never talked about it on the podcast before. But since we we're onto that topic, 
um, we were meant to do the podcast two other times before that. And both times uh, something happened which we couldn't do it. But when it got to the third time, it was literally one day or two days after all of that whole thing happened. So it's it, like, gave you, it gave you more material to, do, to talk about, right? Uh, it did, but also the fact that I think the universe, you know, you that know inspired. I, I, I don't, I don't see, I don't, I don't believe in uh, coincidences. Let's just say. No, me neither. Me neither. Yeah. 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 But it's fantastic, man. You know, I'm, I'm excited for what's going to be coming for, for uh, your band as well and Fetus and Versa. And I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, I, uh, I very much enjoyed the conversation. And I feel like with you guys in particular, obviously, um, the Fetus has always been like this, uh, like, like really cult Italian black metal band that's always kind of been there, kind of in, in murky waters. But now it feels like Obviously, with the Historia Nocturna, that's, I'm going to say, probably your best release thus far. It's a fucking phenomenal record. You know, everything from the compositions, the themes, the just even the skill-based of, of, like, just some of the riffing and the creativity is, is so much, like, it's so much up there. And I feel like with the new lineup that you've got and sort of the weight of live shows that you've been through, uh, throughout the pandemic, um, from as someone observing the band from the outside, I feel like you're just on the verge of a new chapter uh, in in the band's existence, and uh, you know, finally getting to do all of these things. I think is going to be very interesting. So, looking forward to seeing. That's that. why I think that it had to happen that we had to change the lineup. It had to happen that we had to go on tour. We have to go on tour with a band like Aklis or Chaos Invocation as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. and. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm super thrilled myself about about what's going to happen next because of, because I, I I felt the energy during these rehearsals and I'm looking forward to to the live incarnation now. I mean, I, I think it will be it will be strong. I think it will be strong. Yeah. That's fucking great, man. Come to see us. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'll I'll explain you this offline, um, but I won't be able to attend the tour myself. However, the bass player from Trivex, Sully, he's actually flying from the UK to come and see the tour. So I'm sure you'll see him That's around. Beautiful. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, uh, Giuseppe, fucking awesome to have you on, man. I feel like it was long overdue, but we've had it just at the right time. Uh, I've very much enjoyed having you on, and uh, I'm sure this was this was ex this is exactly why I do this podcast because of conversations like this and because of this kind of uh, discussions. You know, it's it's fucking great. So um, yeah, thank you for coming on. It was all my pleasure. It was a pleasure to meet you, and yeah, we had a great one. Absolutely, man. Um, anything in particular that you'd like to promote uh, for the band or anything in particular? Come to the tour. Who knows what happens next? And who knows if there will be any other chance to see us live. So come, come to see us. Absolutely. I can't recommend this hard enough. Uh, obviously, for everyone listening uh, on this tour, you have got Aklis, uh, which I'm sure pretty much most of you are familiar with now. Uh, I had Kyle on episode nine of the podcast. Uh, it's fucking. It's it really, truly one of one of the best bands uh, in black metal, uh, just as Giuseppe said. And then you've of course got Fetus in Versa in uh, just at the cusp of their whatever you want to call that. <laughs> so uh, it's it's going to be very interesting. And of course you've got Chaos Invocation as well. Just a solid fucking black metal lineup. So. Uh, if the tour is coming to your town, go and check it out. And uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Void AD, thank you so much for jumping on to the podcast and to everyone else for listening. And uh, I suppose we'll see you all in the ne next episode of Iblis Manifestations. Cheers, people. Mm -hmm.